Good morning, everybody. We're jumping back into the shop build. There's actually quite a few things that are gonna be happening over the next few days that I'm gonna kinda smash together in this video, but I feel like I'm about to start seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Like, I'm gonna be able to start printing some shirts finally. I think we're finally gonna crack open that giant mystery crate in the shop, which I'm gonna need to recruit some help for because that thing is massive and I'm definitely not doing that by myself. I need to finish unboxing all the stuff from the auto still because, again, way too heavy for me to lift by myself. There's a bunch of print heads in there and everything else involved with that machine. The electrical stuff is gonna start getting installed, so the three-phase converter is gonna go in, the drops for the equipment, all that type of stuff, so that's gonna be a really big thing checked off the list. And I actually have a new piece of equipment being delivered here sometime this morning between 8.30 and 9, which is right away, so. I better get my ass out there. Let's get this started. so much already. This, my friends, is the Kaiser Air Tower, a seven and a half horsepower rotary screw air compressor. <laughs> It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> As some of you regulars know, I used to be a mechanic and I've been spinning wrenches on stuff since I was five years old. So air compressors have been pretty heavily used throughout my life. And one of these compressors has been on my dream list of tools for the past 15 years. And I finally got one. It's for printing shirts, but <laughs> I got one. These air compressors are insane. The quality level, the engineering, the attention to detail, everything is just completely over the top. This is the Mercedes-Benz of air compressor brands, as far as I'm concerned. And hey, they are designed and made in Germany too, so I guess that comparison kind of applies. When I started looking around for an air compressor for this shop, I knew right off the bat that I needed a rotary screw air compressor, simply for the fact that I shoot videos in here on a very regular basis, and piston-style air compressors, they're loud as shit. I know, because I own a huge V-twin one that's in my garage right now that is so loud, you can't even hear yourself think. Originally, one of these wasn't even on my radar because honestly, I didn't think I was gonna be able to pull it off. I was looking at a few other brands that were substantially cheaper, but I would have had to bring them in from outside of province, which would have meant shipping costs, no access to local service, there were long lead times on most of them, and there were a few other things in the mix that I just did not feel good about. So I thought to myself, you know what? Let's just inquire about one of these things for fun and I guess get a little extra taste of disappointment. <laughs> and yeah, it was more money, but it turns out that there's actually a dealer like 20 minutes away from here that I didn't even know about. So I called them up asking originally about the five horsepower version of this compressor and they said, we have the seven and a half horsepower version of it in stock right now. We'll sell it to you for the same price as the five. So. That was pretty awesome. They have parts and service techs on hand anytime that I need them, and they were able to deliver this thing the very next day. So factoring in all that stuff, it was kind of a no-brainer for me just to dump in the extra cash and get the compressor of my dreams. A bigger version of the compressor of my dreams. This thing is gonna be perfect for the shop. They throw a shitload of air, they do it very quietly. It's bigger than I originally needed, so now I've got room to grow and add a few more pieces of equipment to the mix if I need to. It's got an onboard refrigerated dryer, so all the air going to the equipment is gonna be clean and dry and perfect. And this thing's got a vertically mounted tank on it, which is not common at all in rotary screw compressors, at least in this size range. They're usually horizontal, so this thing has a much smaller footprint, which means now I'm gonna be able to readjust that floor plan that I made a while back and gain a ton of floor space. So that means either I can space things out a little bit more freely or have more room to jam in more equipment. Is something like this for everybody? Hell no, definitely not. This is above and beyond, but I look at it as an investment, both myself and in my business. I want us to be one of the best one day and I wanna give us every possible advantage to make that happen. So adding a piece of equipment to the shop that is known to be both very high performing and very reliable, that investment is 100% worth the risk to me. I kinda of went off about that compressor for a little while, didn't I? I'm very excited about it, all right? Give me a break. But I need to start cleaning up in here and putting some of this random shit away because the electrician has come in here to start that whole installation tomorrow. Holy balls, it's cold out there. I need to get an early start because the electricians are gonna be here at 8.30. Thanks for putting this crate together with nails, you fuckheads. Well, now I've gotten through the 100 plus nails that were holding that crate together. 
This is my solid state phase converter. The auto, the dryer, the flashes, all of that stuff need three phase power to run. This is technically a residential neighborhood, so it only has single phase power. I'm sure I could have brought three phase power here with a ton of lobbying and convincing and dealing with permits and all that bullshit, but even if I was able to pull it off, it more than likely would have cost six figures or more to do it. So out of the question. So through the magic of technology, what this bad boy is gonna do is take the single phase power coming in and spit out three phase to power our machines. Don't be mistaken for a second. This route was also not cheap at all. It's actually crazy what this piece of equipment costs. There are much cheaper ways to do it like rotary style phase converters. And I know of a ton of people who are running those in their shops, no problem. But the only issue with rotary style phase converters is there is a lot of voltage spikes going on, which aren't inherently dangerous, but in my case, with the people who are doling out the permits for this place, they don't know jack shit about how that works, even though it's their job. And they were terrified that it was gonna crash the grid in this whole area. So they kind of forced me to go with a solid state converter, which in the end, these are the much more quality way to go, hands down. They produce much cleaner power, there's no spikes, and they're silent, unlike the rotary style ones, which make kind of an annoying whine sound when they're running. So this is definitely better, it just, comes at kind of a harsh premium. Pretty sure I could have bought a fucking new car instead of this thing. And this is the big beast version of one of these things too. It's a 50 horsepower converter, which is way more than what I need in this shop right now, but it gives me enough room to expand in the future if I want to add another press, more flashes, another dryer possibly, whatever. I only wanted to buy one of these things once, so that's that thing. I'm excited for these guys to get going because, well, obviously when they're done, I can get my Rock Tech over here and get that bad boy installed, which is gonna be awesome. And also because these guys have been good so far, I know they do clean work and it sounds like they've got some pretty cool solutions to what I need done in here. So I'm pretty interested to see how this all comes together. Those guys are gonna be in and out of here for probably about a week. There's a lot of shit to do here. A lot of stuff to do in the shop. They're also doing stuff in the house garage. They're doing exterior things for me. So yeah, they've got a lot to do. I'll probably include more about what's happening electrical wise in the next shop vlog. But in the meantime, in order for them to do their job, I kind of have to uncrate a bunch more stuff. So I guess this is just one big unboxing video. The main thing that I got to tackle right now is the one that everyone's been asking about, the big dog. I got to open it. They need it. I've had this thing completely covered since I moved here. So this is basically the first time that I'm seeing it too. I don't even remember what it looks like. So. Let's do this thing. Uh, let's pause for one second here. I did get this thing uncrated and it's amazing. I can't wait to show it to you guys, but the plumbers just got here and they're actually going to start putting in the water and the airlines, all that stuff right now. I honestly had no idea that they were coming today, which is a very welcome surprise because clearly water and air are very important to this shop running. So I'm going to include a little bit about what these guys are doing because I feel like it's very important to the story of this place going. And once they're done, we'll show you what was in that crate. It's been a few days. The electricians actually started in the house garage because I'm having them do a bunch of stuff in there. We're adding more lights. They added a bunch more power for all the machines in there. And they also added new exterior lights to the shop and the house that make it look so much cleaner. And the plumbers got started on their parts. So we actually have water coming from the house to the shop now, which that was a very big ordeal. And we've got the start of the water lines running in here and the air lines. So we're making a little bit of progress. We'll talk about what's going on with all that stuff in a future video. You're here to see what was in that big ass crate. So without further ado, This is the BBC Aeolus. Every time I say that, my mouth says Aeolus, but my brain wants to say Areolus just because, 
I guess I'm a weirdo. And I can't believe nobody guessed what this was. I heard a lot of guesses as to what equipment was in that crate sitting over there, but nobody guessed a dryer in there, which was very surprising to me. We're moving in all of this screen printing equipment and there wasn't a dryer in sight. So I guess I pulled a fast one on you. Anyways, this is probably the baddest electric dryer on the market right now. I had to go electric. We don't have natural gas running to this place. I could have got it, but it would have taken months and months and that's just time that I don't have. If we need to step up in the future, I'll worry about it then. We have a 54 inch belt. This is actually the biggest model that they make. This is gonna be amazing compared to the little tiny 24 inch belt that I've been using for the past three years. This is probably gonna be my favorite thing about working with this. No more doing hoodie origami to get them through the dryer properly. <laughs> this is a forced air dryer too. So you know I'm gonna be going way harder into the whole water-based thing now that I can do it properly. For those of you who don't know what a forced air dryer is, basically there's just fans and stuff in there to really circulate the hot air around to force the moisture out of water-based inks to cure it a lot more efficiently and just overall do a better job. We got this little touchscreen control panel here where I can program and save presets. There's also warm-up standby modes, all kinds of stuff in there that I've yet to learn. I'm actually gonna be doing that tonight, but it's gonna make for a really big workflow improvement. It's got active ventilation at the end of the tunnel, so there's actually a fan in there that's gonna suck up all the fumes that usually billow out the end of a dryer. So when doing stuff like discharge where there's that basically toxic gas coming out of this thing. That's gonna make a big difference. And just the overall fit and finish of this thing is amazing. I mean, look at these little handles. There's springs in there, so they never get left up. It's amazing. Thank you so much to Ryonet and BBC for making this happen for me. This is probably one of the coolest Christmas presents that I've ever gotten in my entire life. It's definitely competing for the top spot right now with that Super Nintendo and Mortal Kombat that I got when I was seven years old. Who else remembers that uppercut to the pit of spikes? This thing is gonna be pretty cool to work with. I'm gonna see big quality improvements because we've got multi-zone control in here so I can control the heat in different parts of the tunnel. They also have their edge max system in here and what that does basically is ensure that you're gonna get the same amount of heat at the edge of the belt as you do in the center. So you can really fill the belt out with stuff and not worry about the things on the outer edge under curing or something like that, which is a problem for a lot of dryers. And I'm gonna see huge workflow improvements, obviously. This thing is massive. I think at the high end with Plastisol, it can run like 1900 pieces per hour. And at the low end even, it's something like 850, 860, which is insane. And even with water-based ink, I think the high end is something like 1200, 1300 pieces per hour. And the low end is like 500 or 600. So. Pretty crazy. And this dryer is probably one of the best ways to cure direct to garment ink. That's not something we do yet here, but that might happen in the future. So if that does happen, I'm ready for it. Feels like I'm finally starting to get somewhere with this place. It was like an endless abyss at the beginning. <laughs> that was a big one that needed to get checked off the list. We're not quite there yet though. I still have a bunch more stuff to unbox. There's still more equipment on the way, believe it or not. We gotta get the electricians to finish all their stuff and the plumbers to finish their stuff. And once that's all done, I can get the rock tech over here to hook all this stuff up and finally get this show on the road. So. There's a lot more shop build videos on the way, but this one is done. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any more of these. Slap the shit out of that thumbs up button for me. Happy holidays, everybody. Hail Santa, <laughs> and we'll see you again in the next one. We're jumping back. Fucking cat hairs, I swear. I have no idea what the fuck I was just trying to say. Every time I turn the camera on, it's like it just disappears right out of my brain. Their part, so they... <laughs> We're gonna have kind of a video within a video going on here. So I have to get this big ass dryer off of that pallet and put the whole thing in place by myself. This dryer is a thousand pounds and that's not a joke. That's a real number. I just looked up the shipping weight and the shipping weight was 1300 pounds and that's everything together. So once you subtract the pallet and the wood and all that stuff, 900 to a thousand pounds is a pretty solid guess. I know at the start of the video, I said I was gonna recruit some help for this, but with that kind of weight, I need to recruit a lot of people and it's the morning of Christmas Eve right now. So the odds of me recruiting anybody are pretty damn slim. And this thing has to come off of here today because the electricians are coming back here to do a little bit of work today and they wanna see where this thing is gonna sit to know where to run the power drop. So I've come up with a little bit of a plan. It's a redneck plan, but it's a plan nonetheless. So my plan is to start cutting away at some of this decking here to get the pallet jack underneath the dryer a little bit, probably underneath that support right there and lift it up. And then with the dryer in the air, crawl underneath here with the chainsaw and hack away at this pallet and remove it in sections 
lower that end down, go to the other end and repeat the process. That seems like the best plan of action right now because I can't just remove the decking from it because it literally has 10 fucking screws at every single joint. It's insane. Whoever put this pallet together, you're an animal. I've thought about it for a while. This seems like the best plan of action. The only thing that I'm worried about is the legs for the dryer. For how heavy this dryer is, these legs are pretty damn flimsy, dude. Like <laughs> These cross braces, I can flex them with barely any effort right now, and I'm gonna be picking this dryer up by those things, so a little bit worried about getting crushed to death right now if those give away, but I got no other option right now. This has gotta happen, so let's hope for the best. I'm gonna start with something easy. I'm gonna jack this end up and get some blocks underneath there and cut this big chunk of excess off and then probably start at the other end. For the next part, I clearly can't have blocks underneath it when I start cutting this thing in half or else shit's gonna collapse and I'm not gonna have a good day. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide some thin pieces of plywood under here so that I can chainsaw those supports out without destroying my floor. And I'm gonna start with the two middle ones and then do the outside ones last just in case this thing decides to let go. I don't wanna be underneath it. And the reason why this is so scary right now is because all the weight is suspended by just these little two by four frames. The dryer's not actually sitting on the pallet. If you look at it, <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm a little sketched out right now. Oh, shit. Whoops. Well, that's a big old fucking gouge in the epoxy. I'm gonna tag the dryer too. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of breath, but I'm down to the point where there's only two cross supports holding this entire thing together now, so. This is the sketchy part where with this thing still in the air, I'm gonna chainsaw out this last one here and hopefully split these two quarters of the pallet out from underneath it, put this end down on the ground and then repeat that on the other side and we should be off the pallet without any issues, I hope. <laughs> That's how you do that. Uh.